If you have a scary story you'd like to hear on the channel, then go to mariesfield.com and send it my way. And of course, thank you. Hi there. So this was something that happened to me when I was traveling alone. I had lost my partner of eight years after a long battle with an illness they had, which caused me to take some time off to try and heal and find myself again. I decided that during the spring break, I would move from Mass back to my home state of Oklahoma to be close to my mother. On my way there, I made some planned stops at places my partner and I enjoyed or were memorable for us as a way to honor them. One of those places was a state park. We were both avid outdoorsy people and loved camping, hiking, and just being one with nature. And this particular park had strong memories, so I knew I had to go. Once I got there, I called my mom to let her know I was there, stuffed my phone and keys in my backpack, and marched on. The sight was beautiful, especially early mornings in spring when you could still see the dew sitting on top of the grass and kind of hanging above the rocks. I was able to just take in the sights and let anything out I needed. A woman I was passing actually snapped a great picture of me by an overhang that I still have to this day. I saw a few people on my hike who were all willing to share their stories and wish me well on my journey. It truly was a therapeutic experience for me. I was, and always will be, a very giving person, and willing to help those in need that I come across too. So when I made eye contact with a man that seemed a bit distraught, or maybe just overwhelmed, I stopped and asked if he was okay. When I approached him sitting on the edge of this cliff with his feet dangling, I noticed a very strong alcohol smell. He said he was fine, but just asked if I had water. I always carried an extra bottle, so I just gave him the whole thing, telling him to keep it. If that man was out there drinking, he was going to need water. I don't know how many people would have stopped for him, let alone give him water, so I did. He thanked me, and we had a small conversation. He told me he used to go there with his parents when he was younger, and that he was just struggling at the time. I don't want to make it too mushy, but... I tried my best at a small, inspirational speech for him, to which he seemed to cheer up a bit. He then asked me if I was single or if I wanted to go get drinks, to which I politely declined. I didn't want to bring up my partner, but just said I wasn't looking for anyone at the time. He shrugged it off and seemed to handle it well by laughing. We then shook hands and wished each other well, and I carried on my path. At one point, I stopped at a small stream and splashed some water on my face and rested. While sitting there, I started getting a feeling like I was being watched. This was a bit off the path, so I rarely saw people over here. I looked around and confirmed no one was around, so I assumed it was either just me or maybe there was an animal. I was, after all, in their territory so I decided it would be best to keep moving. I got back to the path and after a bit, that following feeling came back. I again looked behind me and didn't see anyone, but the feeling would not go away. My instincts were starting to kick in and overwhelm me, so I sporadically made the decision to break into a run to see what would happen. It was probably a stupid idea if it was an animal, but I really just wanted the feeling to go away. After a bit, I slowed down to catch my breath and again looked around, not seeing anyone. But this time, I heard heavy breathing. That path is not easy if you don't take steep inclines like that on a regular basis. So I looked around a little closer and walked back towards a large boulder. On the other side was the same guy I saw earlier. When I saw him, I didn't know what to do other than ask if he was okay again. He again chuckled and said yes, but seemed like he meant it more this time. 
I asked him if he was following me in a joking manner, to which he replied he wasn't intentionally, but just wanted to catch up to me to thank me again because it meant a lot to him. I told him it was no big deal and was glad to help. After some awkward standing around, I then said I had to get going. He waved me on and I headed out, thinking that was a bit awkward, but at least that was solved and over with. But as I made my way to a part that loops around, I started getting that same feeling of being watched. I was a bit less worried this time, expecting it to be the same guy again, but saying I was a bit annoyed sounds too harsh, but I'm not sure how else to put it. I wanted this experience to release any emotions that I had been holding back. Yeah, I had stopped and talked to a few people, but I wasn't really here to meet new people. I wanted to be able to continue this journey on my own. I continued on this time, thinking maybe if I didn't stop to pay attention to him, then I wouldn't have any more run-ins. Yet, because this circled around, we ended up walking towards each other. This time, I just smiled at him and tried to keep walking, but was startled when he grabbed my arm. I've never experienced anything like this, so I didn't know what to do but look at him. He told me again that what I said really meant a lot to him and that he wanted to make it up to me. I told him it wasn't necessary, as I was just being nice. I tried pulling my arm away as I said this, but he only held it tighter. I started becoming a bit scared for obvious reasons, and he picked up on this as he looked at me, smiled, and asked, Are you scared? That made me sick to my stomach. There was no one else around in this secluded area but us. What was he planning? Why would you even say something like that? While choking back tears, I managed to say, please let go of my arm. After a few more seconds of staring at me and smiling, he finally let go and started laughing. I didn't waste any more time and quickly ran. I was familiar with the path and I knew that I still had a bit to go before I got back to the entrance but I remember there was a small opening in the trees to a field with a few benches where families typically stopped and took pictures or had lunch. I was praying I would run into some people and that hopefully I would be able to just walk near them so I wasn't alone. Thankfully, I did come across the spot and there were a few people there. I tried to calm down and look like I was just there to rest as I didn't want anyone to be worried about me. I sat at the bench and looked around, worried he would show up and cause another scene, but thankfully he never did. After some time, I was able to calm down and try to enjoy the last bit of my trek. I was obviously upset. This was supposed to be time for me to heal and move on in my life. And while this was pretty terrifying, I refused to let this ruin it for me. I gathered myself and headed back to the entrance by myself. I started a brisk walk until I was back into my jog until I finally reached the entrance. I stopped by the restrooms to freshen up before I was ready to head back to my car. But as I exited the restroom, I of course would make eye contact with the same guy heading into the shop, but he looked slightly different. He had lost the old dirty jacket he was wearing and the jeans he was wearing now looked like they had been cut at the knees. Could he have changed into them? Quite possibly, but since they seemed jagged and uneven, they looked intentionally and sporadically cut. And of course, as soon as he noticed me, he stopped and turned like he was about to walk towards me. This time, I wasn't going to be the scared little girl. I rolled my eyes and immediately turned around to walk towards my car with my keys clenched between my fingers. I heard someone shout, Hey! from behind me, but I didn't stop. I didn't even turn around until I heard the footsteps getting faster 
causing me to run as well. I managed to get to my car, get in and lock it as he finally caught up and started pulling on my handle. When he realized it was locked, he became enraged. He kept screaming to open the door and was banging on my window and kicking the door. It didn't last long before a ranger noticed and came rushing up to us as well, but he took off. They didn't catch him, but he did stupidly run backwards into the park, so he would have to leave eventually. The ranger asked me what happened, and I agreed to tell an officer. Throughout this whole time, they never found the guy, so I ended up leaving and giving them my contact information if they had any other questions for me. I left there relieved for multiple reasons. Relieved that I would never see that man again, but also relieved that I made it through the trail alone for the first time. It felt like a weight being lifted off of me, like I was being tested and I passed, and it would just make me stronger. I even got a call from the officer telling me that they did finally catch the guy, and since the ranger saw him, I didn't have to come back to identify him. They also told me he had warrants, so he went back with them anyways. Overall, I felt like the trip was successful and I was already feeling better. I'm not going to say it's made me more suspicious of people, as I still look for the best in others, but I'm also mentally stronger and know how to handle situations better, both physically and mentally. And to the guy I met that day, I hope you truly are doing better. I have been a driver for both Uber and Lyft in the past, since around the time that I turned 20, and I've honestly loved it. It's been a fantastic way to earn extra money when I needed it, and I love the whole work when you want thing that they have going on. Yes, I know I sound like a walking advertisement, but trust me, I'm not. While it is a great way to make cash if you have a good car and live in a good area, there are absolutely some really messed up people out there. And that's the biggest issue that I have with working with these services. Most of the time, I'd say around 99.99% .99 of the time, you get normal people who just need a quick ride to wherever it is they're going. Then, that 0.01% comes along and makes you seriously second guess everything in life. This story involves that 0.01, that tiny bit of the population that terrifies the living hell out of me. The story is actually one of the reasons I stopped driving for a while. I have since gone back to doing it, but you'll get why I decided to take a break by the end. I remember that this was one of those red pings that I would look forward to. Those ones where you get the message saying that there's a rider nearby, and that their destination is a good distance from where they are. I like these ones. You get to enjoy the ride, maybe have some small talk, and get paid an alright amount to do so. I accepted the rider, and headed over to the house where I saw that he was standing outside. I rolled down the window, and I told him that I was John, his driver. He nodded and got in the back seat, buckled in, and just stared at the back of the seat that was in front of him. At first I thought he looked tired, and that would make sense, since it was late afternoon and I was a bit drained myself. I started in on my small talk routine, basically just talking about random things like how the day was going. When I asked him how his day was, he seemed to flinch a bit, and told me that he wasn't having the best day. I apologized, and I asked him if he wanted to vent anything, basically saying that therapy sessions were a free perk of using Uber. You'd be surprised how many people open up when they think about the fact that you'll likely never see them again. He just shook his head and told me that he didn't want to talk about it. So I moved on to my last attempt, which was basically just mentioning any small detail to get him thinking. He was heading to another house on the other side of town, 
over in a neighborhood that I personally knew. So, I said as much. So you're going off over, a uh, road name. I know that area. I used to have a friend that lived over there. It's a really nice part of town. She used to take her dog over to the dog park because they didn't require a leash. After I finished my statement, he just nodded and kept staring out into space. It was then that I noticed that he was clenching his jaw really hard, that his eyes looked bloodshot, and that he just seemed out of it. We pulled up to a stop sign, and I stopped and then glanced back at my passenger. Hey, I just need to check and make sure you are okay to be out here. You look like you're in pain or that something is seriously wrong. I know this may sound incredibly annoying, but I'm not going to be that driver that lets some injured person get out of my car and then die because I didn't speak up. If you need to go to the hospital, I'll take you there, and we can get the charge for the ride cancelled. I just want to make sure that you are okay. He didn't even look up at me. He just started shaking like he had the chills and staring off into space. Hey, man, I won't report you or get you into trouble. I just need to make sure that you're okay and you're not on some sort of substance, for my safety now. I'm willing to help you any way you need me to. When I said this, he finally glanced over to me and actually looked me in the eyes. He said that he was fine, just that he was stressed and had a really bad day, and that he needed to get home. In the end, I had to accept this answer. I couldn't force him to go to the hospital, but I was still concerned. I told him that if he changed his mind at any point during the ride, I would take him to get help at no charge. He said thank you, and I pulled back onto the road and kept going. The ride was silent for quite a while. I think we were about three quarters of the way to the destination when he asked me to stop. So I did. I pulled over when I could and asked if he wanted me to take him to the hospital now. Then he surprised me and said, No, I need you to take me to the police station. At this point, I was starting to wonder if this poor kid was the victim of a crime, or if something happened at his original place. I asked if we needed to call 911, or if he just wanted me to drive him there. He said to drive. So I cancelled the trip, and made a mental note to call support and explain the situation to them after the fact, and then I opened maps to get to the closest station. When I got back on the road, I told him, Hey, I went ahead and cancelled the ride, you'll get a refund for it. I'll contact support and let them know that this was on me, so they don't think that you did anything wrong. He then replied with, I killed my mother. Obviously, this caught me off guard. I assumed that I misheard him and said, I'm sorry? I murdered my mother. I strangled her because she pissed me off. She made me mad, so I murdered her. I... I want to turn myself in. As he said this, I could see his tears starting to well up, and my heart was seriously racing. I nodded and told him that we were on the way to the station and that he was doing the right thing. Clearly, he was not stable at this point in time, but I didn't want to antagonize him or make him second guess talking to the cops. As you can imagine, the entire time we were driving to the station after that, I was watching him in the mirror. I pulled up as close to the door of the station as I could. He said thank you and got out, then walked to the door and went in. I pulled into one of the spots and just kind of sat there. After a few moments, one of the officers came out to talk to me, which I partially expected. They asked me if I knew the kid. I told them that I literally picked him up as an Uber, and that I was just taking him to another house, and then he told me that he wanted me to drive him here and that he murdered his mother. I told them that I had no idea who he was. I gave them the address of where I picked him up and where he was going. I showed them in the app all of the proof I could, 
that I was just an Uber driver and not an accomplice or something. My worry was that they were not going to believe me and charge me as aiding a murderer. But they let me go after a while when they were satisfied. And you can bet your ass that I called support, and I spoke with them about this whole thing. I don't know what I expected them to do, but I felt like I needed to tell them about it just in case the police contacted them. In the end, I have no idea what happened to the kid. I have no clue if he was telling the truth, and I have no clue what went on after I left the station. To be completely honest, I kind of prefer it that way. My name is Liberty. I will not give you my last name for privacy reasons. This is a true story that is still hard for me to talk about today. I am an attractive 18-year-old female with long blonde hair and big blue eyes. I have a generous bosom on a 5'5", curvaceous figure. On this day, I was wearing my spring clothes and had a blue top, Daisy Duke shorts, and brown cowboy boots on my feet. I go to a university in Pennsylvania, and I was traveling in my red Mustang GT to visit my parents who live several hours away. The road I was traveling was a long road where you just see miles and miles of it on each side. There is nothing but dense woods. Sometimes you see deer and a few foxes in them too. It was a nice and warm spring day out and great for travel. I had a smile on my face in the beginning, but it all soon quickly changed into a day of absolute horror when my car started to shake and rumble like it was about ready to stop. So I pulled the car over. I saw exhaust coming from my hood, and I knew it must be the engine. I turned the car off as I popped open the hood and looked inside. As soon as I looked inside, I coughed because some of the exhaust from the engine hit me right smack in the face. I then closed the hood in disgust. There was nothing I could do but wait and sit on my hood for the next car passing by that could hopefully give me help. The problem was... I had no cell phone signal, so I couldn't call anybody for help either, and I knew I couldn't wait too long before the heat would get to me and I may dehydrate. An hour passed by when I saw a car rumbling up the long road. It came closer and I saw an elderly man driving a black and color 1919 Ford Model T car in good condition. This elderly man was a preacher man wearing glasses with a black fedora hat on his head in a black minister's top. To my disgust, he passed right by without even looking in my direction. I guess he was not taking any chances, thinking I may be a highway robber or something. He probably did not give a hoot that I was pretty or anything. He was old and probably just wanted to be careful. Rather be safe than sorry, I guess. But the real reason he did not stop for me, I will never know, as I watched him drive his 1919 Ford Model T car into the sunset far away from me. I then looked up into the sky and saw a huge red-tailed hawk flying lazily above me, probably hoping I would kick off and die so he could feed on my carcass. The way the bird was flying right over me sure looked that way. Another hour passed by, then two. I was now starting to sweat, and I was getting thirsty and tired. But just before I nodded off into sleep, I heard another rumble up the road and saw an old pickup truck pull up behind my car to offer me assistance. It was an old, muddy red pickup truck that had seen better days. I was surprised and had an instant uneasy feeling when the guy came out of his truck. He looked like a baby Huey type a 340-pound hulking man with a baby face in his 20s with a bald head wearing blue suspenders and dirty brown work boots. He also smelled of milk, but yet, yet underneath it all, it was a smell of something dying or rotting inside of him. I just could not put my finger on it, though. 
but the milk smell on him was stronger. Maybe he worked on a dairy farm or something, or was a milk drinker, I thought to myself. Hey, missy, what are you doing way out yonder in your lonesome? He said, giggling at me and giving me a very lecherous stare. That stare I saw countless times from horny men who thought I was attractive, but this man was hulkingly huge and fat and far more menacing than others I encountered. But before I could answer him, he giggled as he suddenly grabbed my arm. Luckily, my arm was slick with sweat as I yanked it back and took off running towards the woods to escape this menacing man. I could tell this man was probably a simpleton, but he knew full well what he wanted to do with me. Probably assault me, then kill me and bury me someplace to cover up all the evidence. This baby Huey was surprisingly fast and kept me in eyesight even though I was a good runner and took some track and field in high school as well as college. When I was running as fast as I could through the woods, I was hoping I would not encounter any black bear or coyote who live there, or even wild boar. A wild boar could be deadly to a human as well. I then decided to hide behind a huge rock, but this man was smarter than he looked. He knew I stopped and was probably hiding from me as he stopped also, saying, Come here, chicky, 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 trying to lure me out. I then saw a big, felled tree branch near me and decided to club him with it as I waited for him to come up to where I hid. When the big man did, I popped out behind the rock startling him as I clocked him hard right square in the jaw as he went down to the forest floor in pain as I again took off down the woods. I went past streams and up and down grassy hills to run away from this man, but unfortunately... I could hear him cursing, still chasing me. I thought with fright, how many more young females like me has he chased through the woods like this and possibly killed? Just then, I stopped short in fright. There was a mother black bear and her two cubs in the distance. I could hear the mama bear growling at me. There is nothing more dangerous than a mother bear protecting her cubs from potential danger. But as luck would have it, the mother bear was frightened off by the hulking man cursing loudly trying to harm me as she and her cubs went back into the woods. As I mentioned before, I was a good long distance runner and did not tire easily, but neither, unfortunately, did this man. I suddenly felt a huge branch hit me square in the back as I yelled in pain and fell tumbling down a steep forest hill right into the water below. I immediately pretended I was dead. The big man was a good shot with throwing the large branch and hitting me like this, but I had one last trick up my sleeve for him, which could save my very life, pretend that I was dead. I must have been a real good actress because this man just looked at me for several minutes more and left back into the woods thinking I was dead. When I was convinced he was really gone, I got out of the water and ran fast towards the road I could see in the distance. My body was bruised and battered from the branch hitting me and the fall into the water I took, but I was okay. When I got up to the road, I immediately saw a large Range Rover truck and flagged it down. Luckily, the young man stopped for me and I got inside his truck explaining everything that happened to me. The kind young man, who was my age, took me to the police station as I explained everything to the cops and gave a police sketch artist a description on what the man looked like who tried to harm me. I then called my parents who came to get me. Unfortunately, the police never captured the large man who tried to harm me, but my parents did buy me a brand new car to get back and forth with. The young man in the Range Rover who saved my life, I found out did not live far away from me. He actually got my number and we began dating. So that was one good thing that happened to me out of all of this. I asked my boyfriend if he ever seen a man like this before and he said he didn't. But I thought with a shiver, how many other ladies are in peril with this beast still lurking about? 
I just hoped I would never see this man again. This is a true story that happened to me one day in Pennsylvania, and I was sure happy it did not end in murder. It still gives me the shivers thinking about all of this. Hey there, friends. This is not Marie. Marie currently cannot think of an outro, and she's been sitting here silently for around the entirety of Ocean Avenue by Yellow Card. So, as it is, I decided I would go ahead and record her outro for her. If I sound strange, I apologize. I cannot hear myself because she's wearing my headset. So, uh, hopefully you all enjoyed this collection of true scary stories featuring the ever-amazing As the Raven Dreams. That's right. He was in this video if you didn't notice. He was. Go listen again. Um... I don't know what else she usually says in her outros, despite the fact that I'm always sitting less than six feet away from her whenever she records, because she uses my setup to do it. Um, yeah, hopefully you're all having a beautiful week so far. Hopefully the rest of your week treats you fantastically. And until next time, remember you are loved, you are valid, you are important. You're the best you that you can be. Do not forget it, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Also, I'm not Marie, so I'll just let her sign off by saying, Take care. It's also 9.30 at night. Please forgive me. Yeah, I'll give her that one. Sleep well.